join Forum IS Academy, trusted by hundreds of toppers, including IS Rank 1 Shruti Sharma. Hello guys, welcome to Forum IAS, this is Vijay. In our today's news discussion, we are going to see the list of topics in the slide. The first one is related to the, the Indo-Pacific Geopolitics, the no sign or for Japan in Indo-Pacific Geopolitics. Then the second one, the Bharat 6G vision document, how India plans to lead telecommunication tech. Then the third one, ISTRO reusable launch vehicle landing test successful. It was conducted on Sunday. So the article is all about it. Then the fourth one is about the, the expansion of the political risk provision under the export credit guarantee scheme. Okay. So let us discuss it very briefly. Then the last one is about Aravikulam National Park. It got a Fernarium. So that's what the news came up in today's newspaper. Now without any delay, let us dive into the first topic. But before getting there, let us go through the article what we are going to discuss today. The first one, no sayonara for Japan in the Indo-Pacific geopolitics. Uh, sayonara means goodbye. Okay. So the second one, the Bharat 6G vision document, how India plans to lead telecommunication tech. Then this is about the RLBTD demonstration. Then this is the fourth one. It is about the political risk, which covered under the export guarantee scheme. Then this is the last one. In a first, Aravikulam National Park gets a Fernarium. Here we will be discussing about the Aravikulam National Park and about the ferns. So kindly go through the article. This is the first article for you. And guys here, Japan came up with a new concept, free open Indo-Pacific. So this is the term it propounded, free open Indo-Pacific. Uh, the visit by the Japanese Prime Minister, Fumio Shida to India in March 2023, during which he engaged with Indian counterpart Narendra Modi on global and bilateral issues. And it focused on the cooperation between the G7 and G20. Basically, these both countries, they are looking up to create a synchronization between G7 and G20. It has been expected that guys, uh, molding these two institutions, it has been expected that guys, molding these two institutions, it would bring relevance of other international institutions in securing global order in Indo-Pacific. Moreover, guys, today international arena is very confusing. That's what they had given in the article. Politically, Russian-Ukraine conflict have been bipolarizing the world. Economic crisis in Indo-Pacific countries like Sri Lanka is also a cause of concern. Then apart from these things, food security, then cyberspace, then freedom of seas and connectivity, these are all the concerns area in today international politics. The US federal rates have been rising which creating the volatility in international economic domain. So these are all the concerns what we are witnessing today in the post pandemic time period. But in Indo-Pacific with respect to cyberspace, China alone have been engineering cyber attacks on vulnerable countries. Uh, even India witnessed some cyber attacks from India. So in Russian Ukraine war, China and India, they sidelined with Russia. Uh, you might have known NATO countries are backing the Ukraine. Guys, European nations, they also started feeling the heat of inflation these days because they are having massive energy crunch. All their supply lines were choked because of Russia's cutoff of uh, fossil fuels. So in these circumstances, Japan unveiled its new plan for free and open Indo-Pacific and it exchanged views about Broadening the Japan-India Special Strategic and Global Partnership. Here, the Japan have been considering India as a strategic partner in the Indo-Pacific region. This is highly significant for India because right now, Japan started looking India as a uh, strategic partner. Okay, So, till today, Japan hadn't made any statement like this. But guys, here another one challenge is also highlighted. That is the lack of united stand on what the international order should be. So this is the another one challenge today. The differing position of countries on the Russia-Ukraine war has brought this issue to the fore. 
and in the post pandemic era i as i already told you lot of confusions have been going on so that's what they had given this line in this article here you should know china's clout in south china sea is also ever expanding and it is getting involved in conflict with the various nations which are locating in the south china sea therefore when we talk about the indo pacific we should talk about the four pillars of cooperation so these are the four pillars of cooperation they had discussed in the paper the first one is the principles of peace and rules for prosperity then the second one is about the addressing the indo pacific centric challenges here let us discuss few things about the first principle it wants to reiterate the safe and free passage for the liners of all countries liners means shipping vessels okay so because several unwanted incidents have been happening in indo pacific region you might have known further we should use the indo pacific not only for the prosperity of our partners but to a prosperity of a entire global community and with respect to the second pillar you know guys us itself is dictating lot of issues in the indo pacific it are creating skirmishes in the region therefore countries in the indo pacific they should come together to eliminate other menaces also like uh, pirates attack uh, protection of uh, choke points okay so these are all the few things the national governments can take forward apart from that even china is playing a deadly game in south china sea it is plotting some of the asian members against another group of asian members so these are the things it should be avoided for the free passage in the indo pacific region then the third one is about the connectivity and development so here it it envisage the article envisage a multilayer connectivity it insists that there should be a multiple connectivity in the form of roadways seaways airways etc and guys organized institutions like bimstech apac then in these days quad they should work hand in hand to promote the cooperation and the prosperity then the fourth one is about strengthening the maritime cooperation extending efforts for security and safe use of the sea to air that should not be any aggression over trade and free passage this is what it have been insisting to us here in this article they discussed three major things guys firstly japan through the historical period acting as a active partner in indo pacific then secondly how the global order have been putting challenges in front of the indo pacific partners thirdly they discussed about indo pacific landscape can be turned from us to non us perspective here it is highly important for india because japan considering it as a strategic partner so this is very vital for india and south china sea skirmishes also can be simmered using japanese presence there that they needs to play a more active role to affect the clout of china this is what they have been concluding there with this note let us move to the second article of the day and overall view of this article is japan wants to be in centrality of the indo pacific region so this is what you should know now let us dive into the second article the bharat 6g vision document how india plans to lead telecommunication tech before getting into the article let us discuss about the 6g so guys sixth generation wireless communication is the successor to the 5g cellular technology and this is what they had given here and 6g will be able to use higher frequencies than 5g networks and it will provide substantially uh, higher capacity and with much lower latency okay the latency latency is nothing but a delay and one of the goal of 6g internet will be to support one microsecond latency communication so the delay will be only one microsecond and it will be 1000 times faster than the 5g okay so the latency time will be 1 microsecond so that's how it will be become 1000 times faster it seeks to utilize the terahertz you might have known right megahertz nanohertz like that you might have here here we are going to utilize the terahertz frequency so terahertz till now it hadn't been unutilized so we are going to reap the potential of the terahertz in 6th generation wireless communications in india you might have known the penetration of 5g itself is very low only 5% having access to 5g these days mobile networks have been expanding their presence even in the rural belt 
most of the mobile androids okay android devices they are using only 3g networks okay the four almost one third of the uh, 4g mobiles they are using 3g connectivity so the transition to 5g is highly significant but uh, it will take some time that for the government came up with this 6g vision document and uh, here we can achieve maximum benefits through the digital revolutions so in the vision document itself they discussed about how earlier we can spread our footprints in 6g because the roadmap will provide the affordable 6g services to all the citizens so here they are going to focus in a holistic way we hadn't yet harnessed the potential of 5g but the roadmap for 6g it will speed up the process of digital connectivity not only in urban area but also in rural zones too then here in the document they talked about a apex body so here why they are why they need to discuss about the apex body because here they talked about the incentivization for certain institutions so they also discussed about how the mechanisms have been going to work before the official launch of the 6g because in 5g we did certain mistakes that plundered the digital spread of 5g therefore here in 6g they came up with a visionary document in 6g case government is cruising towards the earlier adoption and the rapid spread of it that's how the article is so interesting on march 2 you might have known the pm narendra modi he unveiled the 6g vision document so actually these all the things happening in the same situation right now almost 45000 villages they lack 4g connectivity and the 5g networks are still being built out but in many rural areas as i already told you 4g hadn't penetrated well so these are all the few things what india have been witnessing these days here in the article they also discussed about how 6g is going to differ from 5g for consumers the website loading time will be very low okay it will be load a very faster and the videos will look better and the files will download faster as has been the case with every new generation of technology and the speed is going to be a major leap in the 6g this is the thing you should know and the secondly the business and the governments are still on the verge of how best to leverage 5g to reap the benefits of high precision low latency applications here guys business like edutech health sectors in which telemedicine is going to benefit a benefit in a large scale then according to the vision document here they are having a plan to club the satellite constellations with the telecom towers and the base stations also will be integrated so the integrated network will be created to provide seamless connections and it states that there will be a integrated network which in turn provides better cooperation and coordination among the carrier networks in providing the exemplary 6g connectivity in not only in urban landscape but also in rural area the government they also indicated that it wants to accelerate india's wireless data consumption and it attested that india should assume the leadership in 6g networks so this may involve everything from encouraging local manufacturing of telecom gear to supporting indian companies and engineers in international discussions around standardizations so here they talked about the standardization because we need to create synchronization among the telecom networks and among the devices also so that's what they also discussed about the standardization the government keenly working on a standardization as a tool to form the india based 6g standard protocols because with respect to 6g india wants to spearhead or to act as a leader in 6g so india delayed the rollout of the 5g what we now witnessing is the haphazard 5g infrastructure throughout the country right so with respect to 5g us and south korea they did a framework and we waited for their technology therefore our government is very cautious in streamlining the agility of 6g in indian landscape another key motivation is the delay in previous generation of telecommunication technology uh, like uh, rolling out of the 5g started uh, etc and all after the us and south korea they handed over the technology to india right so these are the few prime reasons what india have been looking to uh, cruise in the sixth generation wireless communication 
Here the people will ask we hadn't achieved any desired results in 5G then how we can achieve in 6G like that people can talk. But guys India is going to act as a pioneer and it is not going to upgrade the stuffs what it is having. So these are the few things you should know and moreover India doesn't want a repeat of what it did in 5th generation rollout. So that's how the 6G vision document it makes huge significance with respect to the India's communication sector and the vision document says that the government will financially support the research pathways so it is very significant because through the research breakthroughs it will come up with indigenous technology and it will provide seamless communications to uh, academia then companies then each and every citizens okay so especially within the government of india the METI will support various research modules and it will bring various agencies to coordinate to design the 6G environment in such a way to attract more and more capital. So METI is going to be a lead organization. Now let us see some of the targets the vision document had envisioned. Some indicative goals they had given. They are looking to ensure the 100 MBBS bandwidth and every gram panchayat has half a terabit per second connectivity and they are going to establish the 50 million internet hotspots throughout the country with a 13 per square kilometer okay so these are the targets envisioned under the new strategic vision document guys anyway these documents are far away what is more important is how go government is going to make the design of the entire 6g structure because we are not going to wait for technology to come from someone secondly the apex body and how it goes to function or need to be determined by government then only the entire milestones in the roadmap will be achieved. With respect to 6G, we need to keep one note in our mind. We are not looking for adoption, rather we are working for a creation of technology. So India is going to be a tech demonstrator with respect to 6G and it is not going to be a tech adopter. Okay. So with this note, let us move into the next article. This is the third one, ISRO's reusable launch vehicle landing test successful and kindly go through the article and why in news indian space research organization on sunday they successfully carried out the landing experiment on reusable launch vehicle technology demonstration program at the aeronautical test range chalakri chitradurga it is located in karnataka and this demonstration is highly significant for isro's function because it is predicted that rlv is going to be a game changer in the future today whenever gslv and PSLV venturing into the space, first stage and the second stage will, they, will be cut off and it will be acting as a space junk in the orbits. But in this RLV mechanism, we will be using a launch vehicle to place the satellite in its orbit and the carrier will follow a return mission to the Earth. Then ISRO will use the same launch vehicle for other missions also. You know, with this RLV, we can reduce the satellite launching cost and a satellite launching time also and moreover as i already told you we can eliminate the generation of space junks from the launch vehicle and here in the image you can see the how the rlbtd and the conventional satellites or conventional launch vehicles are functioning here in the conventional launch vehicle the first stage and the second stage will be separated out and either they it will get burned in the exo atmosphere or it will reach the bay of bengal okay but uh, with respect to the rlvtd it will take off from the istro's uh, launch station and uh, from the launch pad it will take off and it will place the satellite in the desired orbit then it will uh, trigger its, uh, its own maneuvering system to reach the ground in a safe manner so this is what the rlvtd is demonstrating and here the entire system will follow the autonomous navigations and landing. After this demonstration, ISRO declared that they got done all the operations in this demonstration in an automation mode. So these are all activities controlled by the onboard system itself. And it has been proved that uh, it can do a projects in a large scale. So here there is no input had takeoff from ISRO's command center so entirely fully automated demonstration was carried out yesterday so RLVTD has been successful 
and we can expand this project to generate a RLV in a larger scale. So this technology is completely indigenous and we didn't take any help from any nations. In this test, it is proved that from 4.5 km, from the altitude of 4.5 km, the ISRO executed this mission with the help of uh, Indian Air Force Chinook helicopter. So actually from there, they dropped the RLV TD and it actually did the automated navigations and it landed successfully. So this is all about the RLV TD. Here you can expect the questions uh, from prelims perspective. So kindly go through some other uh, sources apart from our discussion because in our previous analysis also we had discussed a vast amount about RLV TD. So this topic occurs huge significance. With this note, let us dive into the next article. Government to expand definition of political risk under export guarantee scheme. And guys, before getting into the topic, let us have a brief recap about the EPCG. So ECGC, actually it is an export credit guarantee corporation. Um, the ECGC limited is a wholly owned by the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. And the government of India had initially set up Export Risk Insurance Corporation in 1957. After the introduction of insurance covers to banks during the period 1962 to 1964, the name was changed to Export Credit and Guarantee Corporation. So it was changed to ECGC Limited in the year of 2014. The prime objective of ECGC is to promote the exports by providing credit insurance services to exporters against the non-payment risk by the overseas buyers because it can be due to both commercial and political reasons. So these are the few objectives which was carried out by the Export Credit Guarantee Corporation. And ECGC, it acquires huge significance because it will enable it to expand its coverage to export-oriented industries, particularly labor-intensive sectors. And ECGC is a market leader with around 85% market share in the export credit insurance market in India. And it provided support to exports worth 6 lakh crore, which is 28% of the merchandise exports in the financial year of 21. And uh, you all might have known, MSME, it formed the 97% of the client base of ECGC. So this is what it had been given here. Then with respect to the article, the political risk with respect to the trade, uh, especially exports has been updated in the export guarantee scheme and the insurance scheme. Guys, generally our exporters are having certain safeguards with respect to their trade because exporting the goods from one nation to another, it involves huge risk. Let us take exporter X and he is importing the, uh, he is exporting the goods to country Y. So if there is any war in Y means, if there is any war, okay, if there is any war or any political volatility in country Y means, in such situations, the docking of the ship won't happen and the consignment, it won't reach the destinations. So it will lead to a loss to the exporters, but that is covered under the insurance. But non-tariff barriers are there, okay, like anti-dumping duty. So these are the few things which are coming under the non-tariff barriers. They are not covered under it. So economic sanctions especially haven't been there under the EPCG. So are any other insurance schemes? Now the government have been coming up with the inclusion of non-tariff barriers also in the provision of political risk. Till now, as I already told you, the political risk it covered only war and from now onwards it will cover imposition of non-tariff barriers also because after dispatching the goods, before it reaching the destination, the country why they can impose anti-dumping duty. So it will lead to losses to our exporters. So that's what the government came up with this initiative. So this initiative, it will instill confidence among the exporters in dispatching the goods towards these political risk countries. Today, we can take Ukraine under Russia as an example. So with this provision, APCG will indemnify exporters for losses when buyers turn insolvent or default on payments. These are the few things you should know. And with this note, let us dive into the next article. In a first, Aravikulam National Park gets a Fernarium. So, National Park gets a Fernarium. So, Aravikulam National Park, it is very popular for Nilgiri Thar. Okay. So, it is a critically endangered. Okay. So, this Aravikulam National Park, it is located in the Munar region. And 52 varieties of ferns 
had already been planted in the new fernarium and you might have known about the ferns. Ferns are a part of epiphytic family. They grow naturally in a soilless conditions. So it won't require any soil and the plants obtain water and nutrients through the leaching from trees also. A large number of ferns are on the trees inside the park. So let us have a brief recap once again on a fern. Because in the year of 2020, I think we got a question about the bryophytes and the pteridophytes. So that's how the fern also becomes very important. A fern is a member of a group of vascular plants. And you might have known the vascular tissues are xylem and phylum. Xylem, it will transport the nutrients from the soil to the plants, uh, various organs of the plants. Phylum, it will distribute the starch from the leaves to other parts of the body. And they are called as a, these ferns are called as a polypodiophytes. Okay, it includes the living pteridophytes and the bryophytes. And that is actually, these ferns, they are highly specialized in conducting the water and the nutrients without their roots. So, they are also involving in the reproduction, which involves only spores also. So, that's what they are also called as sporophytes. And the ferns have complex leaves called megaphylls. These are called as a megaphylls. Okay, these leaves are called as a megaphylls. And that is, they are more complex than the microphylls of club moses. Club moses is another one variant. And the most ferns are leptosporangiate ferns. And they produce coiled fiddleheads. Okay, so these are the few things you should know. Ferns are defined in a broad sense. Uh, the term is polypodiospedia. Okay. So, these are the few things you should know. Then the classic examples for ferns are horsetails, then whisk ferns, etc. And with respect to Araviculum National Park, it perched 7,000 feet above sea level, uh, former hunting preserve of the British planters. So, the park today exemplifies wildlife at its best. So, this is what it had been given here. And it was declared as a sanctuary in the year of 1975 with the intention of protecting the indigenous population of Nilgiritar. However, in 1978, it was declared as a national park, considering its ecological significance, faunal significance, geomorphological and zoological significance. So, the park is very famous for the Nila Kurunji. You might have known, it will bloom every 12 years. So, the park have been hosting enormous Nila Kurunji flowers. And the highest peak of the south, south of the Himalayas, the Anaimudi, you might have known, Actually, it has been located in this Arabic Long National Park. The park covers almost 97 square kilometer with rolling grasslands and high level sholas. Sholas are, uh, they are exceptionally rich in balsams. Okay. So, these sholas, shola grasslands, they are acting as a feeder for various rivers. Even the Kaveri, which is one of the largest rivers in South India, the shola grasslands have been paving the way for the origin of Kaveri in Kudagu regions. So the topography is, it is the topography of Arabicola National Park is highly undulating because you might have known the Anaimudi is located there, which is the, having the height of 2695 meters. Okay, so therefore the entire national park is highly undulated and the various vegetations are there, uh, like Nilgirita, you might have known, and uh, sufficient tigers uh, population is also living there. With that, the Nilgiri Langur, then Leopard, Giant Squirrel, they are also living in this national park. And that's it friends. With this note, let us dive into the prelims question part. This is the first question for you. Biospinal A, BPA, a cause of concern is structural or key component in the manufacture of which of the following kinds of plastics. So the first, the first one they had given, the low density polyethylene. Polyethylene, you might have known, um, in shops and all, you will be purchasing the uh, goods in the polythene paper. So that is low density polyethylene. And the second one is polycarbonate. Poly Let us discuss about the polycarbonate. The third one is polyethylene terephthalate. This is the water can you might have known, the plastic water bottles. Then polyvinyl chloride, The uh, this component, we are using it in uh, uh, water pipes. You might have known the plastic pipes. It composed of polyvinyl chloride. And the polycarbonate, they are a special application, uh, they are having some special application in plastic segment. And you might have known the food containers that and all, mostly it will be made up of polycarbonate. And the BPA will be coated there, okay. 
so that's what actually it is a uh, category a carcinogen and it will create cancers especially for the male it will create it will create the prostate cancer in the old age so that's what the biospinal a acquires huge significance it came up in the previous year question paper twice upsc had actually asked this topic okay so now let us see the second question and the answer for this first question is answer option b the second one which of the following protected areas are located in kaveri basin the first one nagarkoil national park it is located in karnataka then papigonda national park it is located in andhra pradesh and the third one is satyamangalam tiger reserve it is also located in the uh, basin of kaveri bhavani river have been flowing through the satyamangalam tiger reserve and the wayanad wildlife sanctuary it is also in the basin area of kaveri so 1 3 4 are right answer option c is the right one and now let us see the next question consider the following statements with respect to the probiotics these probiotics they composed of various strains of bacteria and they are termed as a good bacteria and they are living in the gut bacteria and they will help our human body to absorb the nutrients from the food and after absorbing the nutrients it will transfer it to the the uh, digestive juices okay then it will get transferred to the other organs of the body so probiotics are made of both bacteria and yeast this is true okay the organisms in probiotics are found in foods we ingest but they do not naturally occur in our gut this is wrong because naturally probiotics will be living in our in intestine and after apart from that uh, internal sources we can also gather probiotics from our external sources like curd then uh, um, some other dairy products also will be having these probiotics especially the fermented products then the third one probiotics help in the digestion of milk sugars this is true they aid in the digestion of milk sugars the lack of probiotics in the tender age it will lead to the type 2 diabetes in the mature stage or in the adulthood okay so therefore you need to intake probiotics in the sufficient amount in your daily routine so answer option c is the right one for question number 3 and with this note let us wind up our session friends thank you for your patience let me catch you in another discussion tomorrow bye